Welcome to the Conscious Report. I'm Derek Bros. Thank you guys for checking out episode number two. Today we are discussing the Houston Exchange Network um, and exercise and agorism. So, first of all, what's agorism? Let's get into that before we unveil the Houston Exchange Network. Agorism is, according to wiki.mices.org, Agorism is the practice of counter-economics and the ideas associated with that practice. Agorist ideas assert that libertarian philosophy occurs in practice in the real world as counter-economics. Um, agorism is explicitly opposed to political elections and parliamentary strategies. Some agorists oppose intellectual property. Some allow for certain forms of intellectual property. Uh, many, are volunt many voluntarists are practicing agorists. There is no definitive policy statement from any authority or authoritative leader on agorism because agorism is decentralized and non-hierarchical by definition. So there are no leaders to tell you what agorism is. You can come up with new strategies. It's the whole point, the whole goal of it. Agorism, based on the principle of counter-economics, promotes withdrawing from the state and using counter-economics activities to minimize what a person contributes to the state in the form of taxes, license, fees, and so forth. And at a later date, I'm going to explore one of the strategies that I've chosen, uh, voluntary poverty, as a strategy and against the, you know, the state. So, agorism is taking the ideas of creating a voluntary society and um, using counter-economics, which includes the black and gray market, the black market being, uh, quote-unquote, illegal activity, like, say, selling pot to your neighbor, and gray market activity, which is just stuff that's not taxed or, you know, it's, uh, it goes under the government's radar, like maybe mowing your, your neighbor's lawn or something of that sort. So, agorism and counter-economics promotes the use of black markets and gray markets, um, and this is, the idea is what we're going for is by creating a system that set up, sets up um, systems of alternative currencies and bartering networks ahead of the coming uh, collapse of the U.S. dollar, the communities will be more prepared, just plain and simple. I mean, we're, we're either going to be ready for what's coming or we're going to be screwed and we're going to be waiting for FEMA's help. We have choices to make, and we can make those choices now. And so uh, I'm, and many people are moving towards agorism and towards counter-economics. Um, for a little more counter-economics, it says, counter-economics is the study and or practice of all peaceful human action, which is forbidden by the state. It's an important concept of agorism. So, all peaceful action, human action, which is forbidden by the state, which would be black and gray markets, for example, for us to use those. And... What I, what I think that we can do is, as this, the current paradigm, the current system that we've had in the past begins to fade from looking like a popular, pleasant idea, as people start to I recognize more and more that this system is unsustainable. And of course, the state will seek to perpetuate its way itself by having uh, puppeteers come out and masked men parading as your heroes coming out saying that they have the new, the new uh, solution to saving the system. As far as I'm concerned, there is no reform. The system cannot be reformed, this current system, at least in the United States, maybe other countries are, are faring a little bit better for now, but I think other places are already worse. And the United States being the latest superpower, the fading superpower, if we continue down this path towards uh, fascism and the destruction of our rights and destruction of our economy through the Federal Reserve and through um, never-ending war, the war on terror, the war on drugs, the war on people, all these things, uh, we are going to be in a situation where we're dependent on the government, we're dependent on FEMA. Or we start now, we start focusing on building community gardens, uh, promoting barter networks and things of this sort. And that's just what some of our friends in Austin, Texas did. John Bush and Catherine Bleich out there and others were involved with creating the Black and Yellow Pages. And John told me this idea about maybe two years ago, a year and a half ago or so. And since then have been trying to get something going here in Houston. And now the time is right. There's a good amount of people in Houston who support this idea. What they did in Austin and what we're shooting for, and even we want to go beyond what they've done and uh, come up with newer concepts on how to make these ideas spread, is they were able to create a network where local businesses in Austin could uh, choose to deal in either silver or barter with their customers. And they provided them you know, with the information they needed to do this and now it's grown to over 150 businesses around Austin ranging from florist to dentist and and more and essentially that's the idea we're going to take with what we are calling the Houston Exchange Network out here in Houston, in Houston of course Houston free thinkers and other independent uh, activists and just people who are concerned with uh, the economy are starting to get involved and we're looking for more and more businesses 
uh, local businesses. So far, we have um, everything from automotive to AC tech, web work, gardening services, um, recycling services, and different different businesses. Houston Bicycle Company, who will either deal with you with, with silver or will barter with you. And right now, we're working on getting the website set up for it. You can find more out if you look up um, Facebook.com/slash Houston Exchange Network. And, and see what we're going for. And if you're a business that's interested in getting involved with that, please email me or contact that page. My email is dbros at houstonfreethinkers.com and we'll get that in the, the little information under the video. And right now, you know, we're, we're trying to take these ideas and some groups, other groups around Houston have already kind of do, have done things like this, like the, the guys uh, and the, Mike and Paloma from Remarket Houston they do it every, once a month. They have a little marketplace set up where people can come leave items that they no longer need or come uh, barter for items, and there's local vendors there. And so it's, it's already gearing towards that. And we're seeing more and more of, this, of these ideas pop up, and we can start to embrace them now ahead of time, or we can wait till the situation like it is in Spain and other places. The, the European Union is all, already feeling the hurt from the economic downturn that's taking place all around the world. And because of that, the people are, are rioting in the streets. They're protesting because the governments are forcing austerity on the people. This is what's going to happen. As, as the dollar starts to fall, they're going to keep taking from us um, and empower the military and the police because they're trying to maintain some sense of you know, uh, control while it's happening. So you can be prepared for this, and we can do things like starting community gardens and starting things like the Houston Exchange Network. Um, we've already seen this happen in uh, in Greece. Uh, there's some places that have been prepared and that, that were ready for what was coming and uh, were, were ahead of the times. There's a, a town in Greece, a couple m months back there was an article discussing them saying how this this little town is surviving because they've set up a barter network within their city, you know, where you can buy all your goods. And, and it's in other countries, as well, other countries as well across the European Union. And I think there's even some cities in Michigan who have try to do that as well. And another article here, decentralized currencies thriving in Greece during the Euro crisis. So we can get ourselves ahead of the game and prepare. We can be forward-thinking individuals and think about the needs of our community and our brothers and our sisters around us, maybe those who aren't ready to see the information just yet. You can encourage people to start growing their own food and to get involved with uh, using something other than dollar. You, you know, the, the real way to, uh, to end the Fed is to stop using the Federal Reserve note. And more and more people are seeing that. We're seeing a lot of uh, protests around the Federal Reserve, and if you recognize the Fed is the problem, you recognize that you're using the Federal Reserve note every day. So, again, the idea of counter-economics and agorism is to lessen our dependence and our use of the state and its tools. So we can do this in a number of ways, from not buying their food and uh, boycotting Monsanto and all sorts of things like that. And you can go even further than this by trying to get yourself off the dollar, because it is a poison addiction morphine drip that they have us on. They, they have us all using the system and they're slowly crashing it. We hear about quantitative easing unlimited and already the discussion of quantitative easing number four coming up. So, you know, we can, we can wait till it, the shit hits the fan and start scrambling for whatever's left at the grocery store that hasn't been looted and, you know, try to start planting gardens then and and whatever else, or, or we can take that chance. You know, there is a real situation that is going to come to a head at some point in the near future. You haven't prepared. You haven't had the time for whatever reason to grow your own food. You've been ignoring uh, your, your, your family's cries to uh, invest in silver or to start getting your money out of the bank and put it into something real and tangible like food or supplies or water or things that might be helpful in the event of a hurricane or an economic collapse. And now you hear the, you hear the, the uh, vans coming down the streets announcing FEMA's here. FEMA's here to take you to the relocation center for your help. We have food, we have water, we have medicine. Come with us, we can, we can bring you and your family. And now you're forced to make a decision about who has your family's life in their hands? You, your family, or the state? We can, we can stop that now. We can be forward thinking. We can, we can help ourselves. Do something today that your future self will thank you for. Do something today that your family will thank you for. Start a garden. Start looking into things like Houston Exchange Network. Find it on Facebook. Take it. Start it in your city, guys. Like We need, we need to make these things grow. The bigger, the bigger these things get, 
the less it will hurt when the dollar does fail. And it, and it, when hyperinflation does hit, which all signs seem to be pointing to, we won't feel it as much. I mean, there's going to be tough times ahead either way, but we can do this as a community. You know, as always, things come together with the community, and we can, we can help each other. And some people discuss the, the legal issue of uh, dealing in silver and dealing things like this. Some of you guys remember the Liberty Dollar about a year and a half ago. Um, the founder, the 76-year-old guy, uh, Von Nathaus, was arrested, and the government was trying to say that he was basically creating... Um, what is it called? Counterfeit money. Creating counterfeit money because they said his dollar looked too closely to his Liberty dollar looked too closely to the United States dollar, and so he was facing all his time. And this is just a little of background information on that. Um, Van Van Nathaus has argued that that it's not illegal to create currency to privately trade goods and services. Um, numerous cities and regions around the country have experimented with local currency but laws restrict them from resembling the U.S. bills or from being passed off as money printed by the federal government. Dozens, about a dozen states have passed legislation that allow them to produce their own currency backed by gold or silver in the event of hyperinflation striking the U.S. dollar. North and South Carolina are among those states. So look at that. Two, uh, Twelve states have already passed legislation. You know, you don't hear that in the mainstream media, but there are already, some states are already thinking ahead as well. They're preparing. So maybe that's another route we can take. But you as an individual, without needing to try to pass it on a local level or pass a state bill, do that. You as an individual can empower yourself and your family and can start doing these things. So yeah, that's what the Houston Exchange Network's about. It's an exercise in agorism. I invite you guys, go look up agorism, um, the agora, counter-economics, voluntarism. Explore these ideas. Leave some comments about what ideas you have, maybe different ways you've tried to implement agorism into your life or in your city, in your community, or maybe criticisms you have of agorism. The whole point is to have a conversation for us to figure out new ways, the best way for us to achieve a freer society. Thanks for listening. As always, if you can hear this, you are the resistance.